we're talking about the Manage IQ Design Summit coming up on October 7th and 8th in Mawa, New Jersey. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen it yet, just go to manageiq.org. You'll see a link uh, to register. And with me today, I have Brad Askar uh, and John Hardy, both of whom are going to be giving some great meaty talks uh, at, on the first day of the Design Summit, uh, talking about various things uh, that you can do and extend Manage IQ in ways that you never thought were possible. Uh, Brad, who are you? I'm Brad Good to Askar. see you today. Good to see you too. I'm Brad <laughs> Askar, Field Product Man Marketing Manager for the Americas for Cloudforms, uh, which is the downstream product for Manage IQ upstream. Uh, I'm also a former customer of Manage IQ, so that's how I came to come to the mothership here at Red Hat. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of sessions on the extend track, and uh, one of them will be on the object model. So how to get, get around in the object model when you're programming inside Automate, uh, and some of the tips and tricks there, some of the tools that you can use to help see where you are, kind of debug, and, uh, and basically make the developer's life easier. Uh, and what are the gotchas and, and that sort of thing. So I think it'll be exciting and interactive. Uh, we're gonna have people, I'm sure they have plenty of questions and we'll have plenty of answers for that. You, uh, you talked but, about making developer lives easier. I thought we we're supposed to make them harder. Is that the is that not the objective uh, here? We're actually trying to make developers lives easier. And there's a lot of uh, discussions around that very topic and a lot of things that are changing in 3.1 uh, okay. that from the previous pro from the previous upstream that they really make it a lot easier for code management make it a lot easy easier from a tooling standpoint and we will continue to do those things that really add to developer happiness and, and just to, to be clear when he when he refers to three one he's talking about anand just just to, uh -huh. just to point that out to you. yeah <laughs> gotta get your uh, you know, the product <laughs> Put, put your head in the right place, Brad. All right, all right. Uh, so cool, object walker. So uh, what's an object? Tell me. Uh, object walker is a tool that uh, allows you to really take an object that, that you're working with in code and really do a full inspection. And it will actually walk down through, give you all of the values, all of the relationships, all the methods that are available for that. Uh, and really a powerful tool that uh, that lets you see the relationship of all the objects that you're in. A lot of times you're looking at an object and you need to know how to how to get to a sub object or some other relationship. And it really shows you all of that. Cool, and, and what, what would that allow someone to do once they actually have this information? I mean, if you uh, can see all the things, that's great. Yeah, all those, so, so uh, a good example is if you're working with hosts and then you need to find all the VMs. Well, you don't know what, necessarily what that relationship is called or, uh, how to get uh, the VMs, and then once you find the VMs, how to get the actual piece of information that you want. Maybe you want something like its ID, or maybe you want its name, or where it's located. So there's a lot of stuff of information that's uh, that's really useful for the folks that actually develop on Manage IQ. Fantastic. Anything else you're gonna be talking about? Uh, the other thing we're gonna be working on uh, will be a session on advanced policy and state management. So one of the places that people don't go to right away because they're so uh, in the world of doing deployment and, and doing self-service provisioning and uh, and retirement and all that stuff is really a, the, the, one of the other big pieces of the product is policy and state management. And uh, we'll have a session on that and show you how through, through some very simple things, you can really do some effective uh, alerting, monitoring, actually affect uh, how you look at your environment from a policy standpoint and really find systems that are in and out of policy and then something that you can actually do once you find that. A lot of products give you alerting that there's something wrong. We actually give you the tools to actually fix what you find that's wrong. So you said like uh, d defining what it is and is not inside of, or in or out of policy. What kind of things can you do for machines that are comply with policy and those that don't comply with policy? Well, uh, you could, depending on what you find, if, if what is a policy violation is serious enough, like you have an extra NIC in an environment where you're not supposed to have an extra NIC, we could actually take the machine, put it in quarantine and shut it down. We could uh, remove its NIC. We could do any number of things. And, it, and it's very simple to do these kinds of actions and really determine what you want to do. And maybe the first step is, is just alerting a, a security team that something has happened. Uh, so there's any number of things, but the nice thing is, is that you can actually do something instead of just sending an SNMP trap or an email, you could actually power it down, move it someplace else, do whatever you need. That sounds like a powerful tool to add to the security arsenal. It sounds like something that could really be useful for uh, common everyday usage. Very, very much so. 
Uh, would that have been useful for you know someone say facing the Heartbleed debacle a few months ago? Oh yeah, in fact, when that happened, uh, one of the uh, solutions architects uh, quickly created something so that you could quickly identify all the systems that were affected by it, tag them mm -hmm. using the tagging mm -hmm. infrastructure, and then general. And once you tagged it, you could report on it. You could send that list to the security team. Uh, you could determine that you wanted to do some other action. Most people created a security list and dealt with security teams rather than shutting them all off. That's pretty draconian, <laughs> but you could do that if that, you know, if you were in an environment where it was serious enough, you could very easily take that input and shut everything down. That, that wow. Really okay. Different. And then could you, could you then guide work workloads to, you know, compliant, uh, compliant VM so that you're, you know, you know, you're only dealing with the right things. Yeah, and that's the other thing is, aside from the running instances, we would also know which templates were uh, affected and not affected, and we could have marked easily those so that they couldn't have even been used by users. Uh, wow, and they okay. Use templates that didn't have the issue. Fantastic. All right, thanks, Brad. Uh, John Hardy, how are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, John. Excellent. Uh, where are you based right now? I am based out of South London in England, the South part London. of the United Kingdom that is still here. Thank God. <laughs> well, I, I think it's all still there. I don't think anything, you know, fell in the ocean or anything. So I think no, no. it all went the right way in the end. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so, so what are you going to be talking about at uh, Summit? Well, I guess first of all, uh, what do you do uh, with uh, Manage IQ and Cloud Forms? What's what's your role? Okay, so I joined Manage IQ um, previous to the acquisition of Red Hat. So I've got some experience of. Uh, getting MIQ out into the field um, from a pre-sales uh, sales opportunity um, stake, uh, as well as working with the uh, early developers as far as uh, getting the product into um, into its state for uh, acquisition by Red Hat. I okay. attend many of the shows and um, position and present um, the, the Red Hat product um, and obviously the previous uh, Manager IQ product at um, uh, various trade events too. Yeah, I've seen you at quite a bit, a few events. You're uh, you're very much a man about town. Yeah, and I also run uh, a couple of blogs, uh, uh, YouTube channel, all about cloud forms uh, now, which is obviously very applicable to the Manage IQ stream um, because uh, the, the two the two items uh, have a lot of synergy between them as, as far as the stuff that I blog about. So absolutely. Well, what is the URL? What's the URL for your blog? So, uh, you know, Cloud Forms Now is the is the blog, and on there I post links to videos that I put on YouTube that cover um, many integrations between, um, you know, the, the, the effectively the you know the base product, whether that's Manage IQ or Cloud Forms. All of the stuff that I tend to blog about uh, is applicable to both, uh, and that will cover things like ServiceNow integrations or OpenShift enablement. Um, as well as just some tedious, uh, you know, customizations like renaming a virtual machine or something like that. No, it, it's quite com comprehensive. I was very impressed. Uh, I, well, I am very impressed every time I go there. there there's always something I learn uh, visiting that blog. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, whether you're a CloudForms customer or Manage IQ user, it's a uh, very useful information, uh, if, especially if you need to customize uh, your deployment. Uh, so, what are you going? Speaking of uh, customization, what are you going to be talking about uh, at the uh, Design Summit? Sure. So um, I'm going to cover two topics. Um, the first topic is effectively a um, interesting one about what we call state machines. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to educate people the difference between a state machine and uh, what everybody perceives to be a workflow. So um, I'm going to take you through uh, why a state machine is better than a workflow, um, how you use okay. certain uh, features like reentrancy, assertions, uh, how the how the combination of everything comes to a, me a method and an instance. Um, that will dovetail nicely into Brad's um, object walker discussions, um, where when we start to look at methods, you start to realize that you need to have a look into workspaces, um, which I'll cover off um, and, like I say, will dovetail nicely into Brad's. Um, so that's the first one. It's titled uh, Fisher Price State Machine. So uh, the reason why is because state machines can be um, as glorious and as complicated as you want them to be. But uh, sometimes you need to start really, really simple. So that's what we're going to be doing. Is we're going to be starting with my first state machine, which will uh, show you first exactly state how machines. this work. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I definitely look forward to that one. Um, could you just quickly describe the difference to the end user between a workflow and a state machine? Well, uh, <laughs> so a workflow um, is a is a combination of steps uh, where 
a state machine has the added functionality of being able to fork out and be able to do uh, retries and re-entrancy by itself, um, basically okay. where uh, it can close down the workflow and come back at a later date, later time, um, without okay. actually causing okay. any issues to CPU, memory, um, utilization of the host system. Um, so for things, like, uh, for things like what Manage IQ is really good at, like provisioning, state machines are great because we don't know how long a task may take. Um, for instance, you know, provisioning on VMware may be quicker or slower than provisioning on OpenStack or Amazon and so on. So a state machine is far better suited to, um, to the type of work that Manage IQ does than traditional run book automation workflows like you find in um, quite a lot of the other cloud automation products. Great. Okay. And your other talk? So my other talk is um, automating uh, Manage IQ. So that's more uh, basically coming in from somewhere else. So do you imagine that you've got an ITSM product or uh, quite a popular one to use as something like ServiceNow? Um, you know, yes. if, you, if, you, if you have a catalog, existing catalog system like ServiceNow has where um, you wish to model things with inside of ServiceNow that you could uh, deliver using cloud forms, um, uh, sorry, or manage IQ, obviously, uh, then what you'll want to do um, is link those two together. And that's what my second talk is going to be, is it's going to be taking you through uh, the implementation of the SOAP API that we've had for a number of years now, um, as well as okay. the brand new REST API that you find in uh, manage IQ and AND, which uh, is very interesting because the REST API um, actually trumps the SOAP API as far as fe features of functionality. There's a lot of new stuff inside the REST API Great. that is not available in SOAP. It slices, it dices, it does your laundry. Uh, that's no, that is really exciting, and it is new with the Manage IQ and non-release. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, some integrations done with that API. I'm glad you're going to be giving that talk because it's going to be uh, in high demand. I can see it being uh, very widely uh, viewed uh, across the internet when we publish it live. So thank you. Thank you. Cool. Uh, well, that's that does it for our uh, summary uh, for Brad and John. Uh, look for them uh, to give their uh, sessions on the first day of the Manage IQ Design Summit. That's going to be October 7th in uh, Mawa, New Jersey. Go to manageiq.org. Uh, sign up today. It'll be great for everyone. Uh, we're expecting a really nice crowd. We've got some great sessions from Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, some sessions from uh, uh, other people uh, who have been uh, doing real live deployments out in the field and talk about their experiences there. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks, guys, for coming by. I appreciate having you. <laughs>